Batman Death in the Family Part 1 Gotham City, New Jersey, December 2005 It was a nasty, slushy winter in Gotham City as freezing rain was falling down all over the city. Well, that was the least of the problems for certain people, namely the Bat Family, Batman, Robin, and Batgirl. Commissioner Gordon was kidnapped by none other than the Joker, and he has made his ransom demand. The ransom, there was no ransom. It was just a threat. It was a threat that he stated that if Batman were to come and rescue the commissioner tonight, he would kill the commissioner. Well, Joker was unaware that Bruce Wayne, a.k.a. the Batman, was not even in town. Bruce Wayne was all the way in California for a business meeting. Of course, Bruce Wayne heard about it, but he couldn't break away from an important business meeting. He just had to rely on the two people he knew who could get the job done, namely Batgirl and his second Robin, Jason Todd. In the Bat Bunker beneath the Wayne Penthouse building, Jason Todd was getting ready to go out and save the commissioner, despite what Alfred was telling him. Alfred says, Oh, Master Jason, please don't go out there tonight. Joker is a very dangerous man. Plus, I just received a text message from Master Bruce. The text message reads that the private jet has left the executive airport and it's on its way to Gotham City. Then Alfred says, Please, Master Jason, just reconsider and wait until Master Bruce gets here. Jason says to Alfred, No can do, Alfred. You heard what the Joker said. If Batman shows up, he's going to kill the commissioner. That's the thing. He's waiting for Batman to show up, but not Robin. So Robin was suiting himself up, putting on his red costume, his black cape that's yellow lined, and then he puts on his mask. Afterwards, he walks over to the bat computer, punches up a few keys, and looks at the diagram of the Seagate Amusement Park. The Seagate Amusement Park was once a oil rig that was later converted into an unopened amusement park by a local billionaire in Gotham City as a place for his daughter and other children in Gotham to go to to have fun. Well, after his daughter died, he committed suicide and Seagate never opened. Now it just rots away like many things in Gotham City. But tonight it was the hideout of the Joker. Meanwhile, in the other end of the city, going on at the same moment, Kathy Kane, Bruce Wayne's longtime best friend, was suiting up in her outfit. She was the Batgirl. As she was suiting up, loading the gadgets and the weapons into her utility belt, she also pulls up in her computer the blueprints of the Seagate Amusement Park. She looks to where she can get in at and not be seen. After she does that, she goes out to her motorcycle, starts it up, and rides off into the dark, cold, stormy night. <laughs> Meanwhile, somewhere inside the Seagate Amusement Park, Commissioner Gordon was tied to a chair. He was bloodied and beaten. The Joker and his goons had beat him up and kidnapped him. And now he was somewhere at the amusement park. As the commissioner was surveying his surroundings, he hears the Joker coming up singing a god-awful Christmas song. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a deadly new year. <laughs> The Joker comes up to the commissioner, wearing his usual purple suit, but this time he was sporting a Santa hat, since it was the season. Then the commissioner says to the Joker, You know, Joker, I heard some bad singing in my time, but you take the cake. You sound like a dog that I ran over one time by accident. Then the Joker says to the commissioner, Now, 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 commissioner. I know we all can't appreciate good singing when we hear it. But it'll do you no good to flatter me. Then at that moment, Harley Quinn comes skipping into the room. 
singing and everything, and she says, Oh, Mr. J, all the policemen are secured and waiting. When the commissioner heard that, he says, Who secured? The Joker then turns around and says to the commissioner, Well, commissioner, before you turn song critic, I was going to tell you about the failed rescue attempt on you. And now... Several policemen are dead, and the ones that are still alive are scattered all over this amusement park, waiting to also be rescued. They're all part of my elaborate trap. <laughs> the commissioner says angrily, You son of a bitch, you goddamn son of a bitch! Let me out, let me out! Oh, so help me when I get my hands on you, Joker! Dental records won't be able to identify you! Then the Joker says to the commissioner, Tiss, 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 Commissioner. You can't get angry like that. I can't have your blood pressure skyrocket right now. You need to be alive to see my grand Christmas masterpiece that I have planned. <laughs> then the Joker reaches in for his pocket and pulls out a small remote control and presses a button. After he presses the button, then the room lights up with hundreds of Christmas lights. There was a giant Santa Claus that looks like it was welded together from scrap metal and poorly painted. He had a giant clock on his belly that was starting to tick. And then the commissioner saw there was giant drums of explosives by the Santa statue. And the Santa statue was letting out a very electronic, robotic sounding ho ho ho. Ho ho ho. Ho, 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 ho. Then the Joker points to the giant clock on the Santa statue abdomen, which was reading the correct time right now, 8 o'clock, as was taken away, and he says, You see that, Commissioner? That's your life taken away at 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. This whole place will go sky high. And you, and hopefully the two imposters with it, Batgirl and Robin. <laughs> After Joker mentioned his plan, then Harley Quinn gives a little clap and some cheering excitement. <laughs> then she says, gee, Mr. J, I think Batman's going to love that Christmas present you have set up for him. Joker then says to Harley, of course, Harley, he will. He always enjoys all the holiday presents I give him. And after Robin and Batgirl out the way, then's gonna be the way it used to be. Me and my best friend playing together. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, outside the Seagate Amusement Park, the rain was falling very hard and the cold wind was blowing. It had to be no more than 30 degrees outside. Harvey Bullock was outside with the rest of the police leading the charge as he was trying to figure out what happened to the SWAT team that went in to rescue the commissioner. Someone comes up to the detective and he says, Detective Bullock, we have no sign of the SWAT team. We looked. There's snipers all over the place and the radio's silent. We can't raise them on the radio. Bullock says, God damn it, that's just great. We got the commissioner prisoner, and now we possibly have dead SWAT team men. This is just great. If this night couldn't get any worse. Meanwhile, at the entrance to the Seagate Amusement Park, this was the secondary entrance, as the police were outside the main entrance. That was actually a cable car station that would take visitors to the main theme park itself on the oil rig. Joker's men were standing there in the cold rain, waiting. One of the Joker's men says, Man, what a night, man. Look at this, I'm stuck doing guard duty out here in the cold, freezing rain while Joker and Harley are probably making out in front of the commissioner. The other guard says to his friend, Hey, don't worry, man. So what? After tonight, I don't think there's going to be a commissioner of the police. <laughs> Suddenly, a figure glides in and kicks both of their butts. <laughs> the
That figure was none other than Batgirl. Then she quickly pulls out her grappling gun, shoots at the last guy, reels him in, and hits him so hard it knocks him out cold. But Batgirl got careless. There was one more guy who had an assault rifle. He was pointing at her and was ready to fire, but all of a sudden, a batarang comes flying in and knocks him out cold. Then Robin glides in and slides on the wet surface. He looks at Batgirl and he says to Batgirl, Look like you could use some help. Batgirl then responded back. I got everything under control here, Robin. Then Robin says, It didn't look like it where I was standing at. Then Batgirl decides to chastise Robin. We're not going to argue about this right now. We have the commissioner to save and we have a lot to do. So, as far as I'm concerned, while Batman is out, you're going to follow my orders. Robin gives a shoulder shrug and a nod like he understands. Then Batgirl goes on to explain the situation. On my way over here, I heard the police band that they sent in a SWAT team to try to get the commissioner, but they lost contact with the SWAT team. They don't know if they're alive or dead. It's our job to find out. Then Robin says to Batgirl, I think they're still alive. I had an aerial drone fly over here. The aerial drone has a multi-spectrum camera. The thermal image shows several men hostage, along with several Joker's goons, holding them at gunpoint. Plus, the EMP scanner shows several devices synonymous with explosives in and around certain parts of the island. Robin pulls out his PDA and shows Batgirl what the aerial drone found, and he showed him where the hostages were and where the bombs were. Batgirl then says to Robin, Looks like it's going to be divide and conquer. Robin, you take care of the bombs, and I'll take care of the hostages. Robin nods his head in agreement, and then pulls out his grapple gun and grapples off. Then Batgirl pulls out her grapple gun and grapples off. Well, the two heroes were now going to take care of the problem. Batgirl arrives to the first set of hostages. There were six of Joker's thugs guarding three of the SWAT team members who were captured. They were put inside a Ferris wheel that was spinning at high speed. Batgirl knew she needed to get them saved before they would die from heart problems from that Ferris wheel going at high speed. Plus, Batgirl knew she had an advantage. The Ferris wheel's music was loud and the heavy rain too was loud along with the wind so it would cover her tracks as she was stealthily taking out the six thugs that were guarding the three SWAT men. As she does that she quickly puts each one of them in a sleeper hold, knocks them out and hides the body. After she was done she stops the ferris wheel from spinning. The ferris wheel begins to gradually slow down until it comes to a complete stop. She helps out the freed swap men as they were all puking from spinning at high speed in that thing. She asked them if they were okay. They said yes, they'll be okay. Then she shows them where their gear was at, along where the unconscious men were at. They said to her they got everything under control as they strapped on their gear and got their guns and secured the area. Then Batgirl grapples out to tackle on the next hostage rescue. The next group of hostages were just two SWAT officers and they were at the Kraken's Lair, a funhouse type of attraction. Inside at the Kraken's Lair, the hostages were at the very center of the Kraken's Lair. Batgirl arrives where she was not seen. She used detective mode and sees that there were two SWAT men in there and three armed men. Inside too there was a giant animatronic Kraken. Detective mode showed that there was power going to the giant animatronic, so she decided to use it to scare the men crapless. She sneaks over to the switch, flips it. Soon the lights turn on in the entire room, and the giant animatronic Kraken starts moving its tentacles slowly, freaking out the guys. Then the giant animatronic Kraken lets out a monstrous roar. roar. 
Then the animatronic starts pouring out super hot steam, which was blanketing the room in steamy fog. She then seizes the moment, using detective mode, to see through the steam and takes down all three guards silently. Afterwards, she grapples up, frees the two swamp men. She does the same process with the other guy she rescued, shows them the unconscious guys, and shows them where their gear's at. They soon secure the room, and Batgirl goes off to save the final set of hostages. Meanwhile, in another part of the amusement park, Robin was going to disarm the first set of bombs. Of course, Joker had two guys guarding it, which Robin glides in, taking down the first guy by gliding right into him and knocking him out cold. Then he flings a battering at the second guy, knocking him out. Robin goes right over to the bomb. With detective mode, he was able to scan the bombs. The bombs were all radio controlled. None of them had timers. So he proceeded to disconnect the radio receivers to the first bomb. Then he goes over to the other end of the island and repeats the same process, takes down the two guys that Joker had guarding it, and then disables the second bomb. Then he heads over to the third bomb, takes out the two men guarding it, and disables it. Then he reports his finding to Batgirl. Come in, Batgirl. This is Robin. Listen, I already disabled three of the bombs. They had radio receivers. They were going to receive some sort of radio signal, but they are not going to receive it anymore. The fourth bomb is in the other end of the island. I bet you the Joker's there. I'm going over there right now to stop him. But then Batgirl says over the radio, Negative, Robin. You're going to wait for me. Afterwards, then we're going to stop the Joker. I'm about to rescue the third group of hostages. Meanwhile, Batgirl arrives to where the third group of hostages were held at. They were being held at, at the merry-go-round. The merry-go-around was going around slowly as three of the SWAT team members were tied to the merry-go-round, but they were also guarded by five of the Joker thugs. Batgirl once again decided to use the element to surprise. Since the merry-go-round was loud, she was able to sneak up and beat up all the Joker's men. After making short work of them, Batgirl frees the men from the carousel. They thank Batgirl, and Batgirl grapples off to rendezvous with Robin. But on her way to rendezvous with Robin, a bunch of the remaining Joker men are there waiting for Batgirl with their assault rifles drawn. There was too many of them to fight off, and they all had their guns pointing at her. They all let out a big smile as they're about to open fire. Batgirl thought this was the end. She said in her mind, oh great, this is how it ends. Suddenly, a battering flies overhead, cuts the string of lights above the Joker's goons. The string of lights falls, lands on the rain-soaked ground in front of the Joker's goons. Suddenly, they all were electrocuted to death. Afterwards, Batgirl breathes a sign of relief, and Batman lands right next to her. She says, Thank goodness you're here, Batman. I don't know what would happen if you didn't save me. Batgirl goes on to explain, I just rescued all the SWAT team members who were captured. Robin just defused three of the four bombs. He was on his way to find the fourth bomb. But I believe the Joker is there. I told him to wait. I was on my way to rendezvous with him, but I don't know if he's going to wait for me or not. Then Batman says, No, he won't. I know Robin. He's brash and impulsive. He's probably going there to take down the fourth bomb and try to take down the Joker. I know where he's hiding out at in this amusement park. Just stay behind, mop up any stragglers, and I'll take care of the Joker. So the two ran off in opposite directions, Batman towards where the Joker's at, and Batgirl to mop up any stragglers. As Batgirl ran, suddenly, Harley Quinn, coming with a 10-gauge shotgun, cocks it and takes a shot at Batgirl. Luckily, it missed Batgirl and hit the metal wall. 
but Batgirl quickly took cover. She activates detective mode to look around and sees Harley with the shotgun. Harley says, All right, Batgirl, where are you at? You can't hide forever. Why don't you just come out and make it easier for me to kill you? Harley Quinn was walking slowly as the cold rain was pouring down and the cold wind was howling. She was looking for Batgirl, being very cautious. She knew Batgirl could be like Batman, very sneaky and as strong as Batman. While she was walking around, all of a sudden, a device is flung out of nowhere, attaches to Harley Quinn's backside, and releases a powerful electric shock on Harley Quinn. Harley Quinn writhes and screams in pain. She drops her shotgun. Suddenly, Batgirl glides in and kicks Harley Quinn, knocking her out. <coughs> Meanwhile, Robin makes it to where the commissioner was being held prisoner at. He sees the final bomb and the giant ticking Santa Claus ticking away. It was 15 minutes till 10. Commissioner Gordon screams, Oh, thank God, Robin. Get me out of here, man. That thing's going to go off at 10 o'clock. You have to get me out of here. Robin says, Hang on, Commissioner. I'm coming over. Well, as he was coming over to free the Commissioner, all of a sudden, the Joker came out of nowhere, surprised Robin, and started beating him savagely with a crowbar. After the Joker was finished, he tossed us a crowbar aside. Then the Joker says... Spare the rod, spoil the child. <laughs> then the Joker looks up at the ticking Santa clock and he says, Well, Commissioner, it is time for me to go. But if you're ever in town, feel free to drop in. <laughs> the Joker makes his way to the edge of the room where there was a huge opening. There he sees the stormy seas in front of him, the pouring rain and the howling wind. Then he leaps. As he leaps, he rips open the parachute and he parachutes to safety. As he was getting away, he lets out a loud maniacal laughter. <laughs> After the Joker makes a departure, the commissioner looked in horror as it was already 9.50. Then he looked further in horror as the bloody beaten Robin, who he thought was dead, moans, uh, struggles to get up and gets up. He was very unsteady on his feet. He fumbles over towards the commissioner, falls on the ground. He struggles to regain his composure. With very labored difficulty, he gets back up on his feet, still unsteady, he goes over to the commissioner with a battering, cuts the commissioner free. The commissioner quickly takes the rope off and he says, Come on, Robin, we have to get out of here. Robin says, No, commissioner, go, go, save yourself. Oh, I can't make it. The commissioner runs forward. He stops a sec, look back at Robin, who was beginning to collapse onto the chair as he couldn't stand up anymore. Then the commissioner goes on running. He makes it out to the outside as Batman was gliding down and landing. Batman runs over to the commissioner. The commissioner said before Batman could utter a word, Robin, he's in there. He was badly beaten by the Joker. The bomb's about to go off. Batman quickly runs without a second thought as he ran down the winding hall to where Robin was. It was like slow motion as he tried to hurry. Running as fast as he could run, Batman was nearly to the room where Robin was laying dying at. As he ran and ran, suddenly it was 10 o'clock. The bomb goes off. Then there was a massive explosion. which the fireball of the explosion comes down the hallway, hits Batman, sends him flying back. Batman lost consciousness momentarily, but he quickly regained it as he moaned Ugh, uh, and struggles to get up. His bat suit took some damage from that explosion, but 
his injuries, if there was any, was not on his mind. He ran into the ruined room. The explosion did a number. Half of the room was gone. There was still the floor and a lot of twisted metal and little fires on the ground that were quickly being put out by the rain. Batman uses detective mode and searches the rubble. He sees the skeleton of Robin. He turns off detective mode, runs to where Robin's body is buried at in the rubble, and he starts pulling away the big things of metal until Robin's body is revealed. Battered, beaten, bruised. He activates detective mode again. No life signs, no heartbeat. Batman says, Oh God, no. Oh God, no, 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 God, no. No! Batman was cradling Robin's lifeless body as the cold rain was falling on them, washing the blood out of Robin's face and washing some of the blood out of Batman's face. He looked and he says, No, don't let this be, please. No, don't let this be, please. Don't let this end this way. Don't let it end this way. Batgirl at that moment glides in to see what was going on. She was shocked and horrified to see what happened to Robin. She runs over to Batman. Batman looks at her and they, she looks at Batman back and she looks at Robin's lifeless body. She starts tearing up underneath her cowl and starts crying over Robin. Batman says to her, Quick, we gotta get out of here before the police come through here. Come on, follow me. We're going back to the Bat Bunker. Later at the Bat Bunker, beneath the Wayne Foundation building, Batman and Batgirl were there. Well, their cows were off, and they were looking at Robin's lifeless body, which was on the lab table. Alfred was crying his eyes out, and he says, I can't believe this, Master Bruce. I can't believe this. What we're going to do now? Bruce looks at Alfred and he says, I thought I never would use this, but we'll have to activate the contingency plan. Kathy looks at Bruce and asks Bruce, what is the contingency plan? Bruce says to Kathy, in case one of us is killed in action, this plan was to make sure it looked like it was an accident, so no one who was involved with my Batman activities could be connected and my identity as Batman is kept safe. I thought I would never have to use this, but I guess I was wrong, says Bruce, wiping a tear from his eye. Days later, the police were at the Wayne penthouse taking down Bruce's runaway report. The police officer says to Bruce Wayne, Well, Mr. Wayne, we're going to do everything we can to find this young man, but I'm going to be honest with you, Mr. Wayne. I've been a policeman for 18 years, and usually with runaways like with young Jason Todd's record we never find them Bruce says to the officer I understand thank you for all you guys are doing they say goodbye to Bruce Wayne and they leave his penthouse then the next day Jason Todd's body is secretly buried in the very backyard at the construction site of Wayne Manor that was being rebuilt from the fire it was late night there was nobody around no workers so they could easily bury the body deep and they made sure that the earth doesn't look like it was disturbed. Then Christmas rolled around. All the presents that Bruce Wayne got for Jason Todd, he went and gave it to some of the kids at the orphanage that he decided to make a surprise visit to. It was great press. Bruce Wayne visits orphanage, gives presents to children. Well, the day after Christmas... Bruce Wayne was sitting on the balcony of his penthouse looking at the beautiful downtown skyline as snow was gently falling. He was out there without a jacket. Alfred comes out there and he says, Oh, Master Bruce, I hope you're not trying to commit suicide by exposure. That is no way to bring Jason back. Bruce says, I don't care anymore. I don't care. I can't believe this happened, Alfred. All the years that I've had a sidekick, he's the first one to die. He was only 17, Alfred. Only 17. Alfred says to Bruce, I'm well aware of that, Master Bruce. 
Then Alfred says, the question, sir, is are you going to take another troubled teenager under your wings? Bruce says, no. From now on, Batman's going to work alone. Alfred says, that's a good idea, Master Bruce. That's a good idea. Now please, sir, go back inside and warm yourself by the fire before you get pneumonia. Bruce, uh, I will. I will. Then Bruce takes one last look at the city skyline. When all of a sudden, the bat signal shines like a beacon into the night snow-filled sky. Bruce says, well, looks like the commissioner's calling, Alfred. Time to go to work. Like and subscribe. The end.